Hallelujah. So, a few questions. First question will be, who are you? Ask your neighbor, who are you? Who are you? Now, when you gave your life to Christ, the enemy wants to say, who are you? Who are you to be blessed by God? Who are you? Man, woman, who are you to be forgiven? Who are you to be precious? Who are you to think that you are valuable? Who are you? Now, I'm saying at the end of the day, that's the essence essence of who we are is the knowing of who we are yes you know as a child a lot of fears in my life in my life and uh, and yes i said i cannot work with people i cannot stand in front of people uh too much fear it will not work Ah, uh -uh, not for me and society and circumstances dictated who i am who are you then and now? Then is when you were born in the heart of the Father. And my brother, my sister, you need to know who you are based on this word. You know? What is this Ferrari all about? If you don't have the manual for the Ferrari and you look at a manual of a Mini or a caravan and you sit with a manual of a caravan and you not try to figure out this Ferrari. What an absolute circus. But too many times we do that with our lives. Sit as Ferraris, but we sit with the manual of a caravan because this is what the world is saying, who I am. This is what the teacher said. That is what that person said that hurt me. This is all the stuff that people did. Hello? But at the end of the day, that is an uh, ostrich singing there. Something, But what I'm saying is, who do you believe you are? Because if you are not understanding through his word your value, you will try to be somebody. You will try to be somebody. And if somebody is not nice with you, if somebody is not nice with you, you can easily be offended, easily withdraw your heart, easily feel rejected. If everybody must encourage you the whole time, otherwise you feel down. There's only one reason. It's because you never discovered who you are. Now they must tell you who you are. Now they must, and the circumstances must tell you who you are. Yes, we need encouragement. But don't confuse encouragement with identity in Christ. You need to have the revelation of who you are. And for that, you need to look at the cross of Christ, what he did on the cross, the price that he paid. If you say, no, I'm not, uh, I'm this and I'm that. Okay, then you have a problem with the cross. You have a problem with the cross of Christ. Because the cross of Christ showed you your value. Showed you your value. How precious you are. How valuable you are. Are you with me? But if you don't know the message of the cross, if you don't know the message... That's either a stumbling block or a foundation. For the foundation of your life, you need to know who you are. Otherwise, you will be in performance and either be I'm a failure or I'm a success because I'm successful out there. No. Start with the cross of Christ. Start with who God called you to be. First of all, he said, when you gave your life to him, you're my son. You're my daughter. The bride of Christ, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hello, my beloved, the Lord said. And from that place, discover, go on a journey with the Holy Spirit to see that what God has for your life. Can we do that? Can we do that? then we will not be so easily offended. Then we will not so easily close our hearts for people and open and close. And, open. and then we have commitment here and then not commitment. Then we have commitment there and not commitment. Then, no, that's not the way it can go. In Jesus' name, God's going to set us free. Now we're talking about one scripture that you all know, Ephesians 2 verse 10, as you guys are writing down. We are 
We are. We are. We are here. So who are you? We are his workmanship. His craftsmanship. An excellent product. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. To do the good works that God has prepared for us to do. Amen? Amen? We're talking about that. So the first question, who are you? And I'm saying, David said to Goliath, who are you? Don't you know who I am? I know who I am. Therefore, I can address the demonic world. Therefore, I can address the giants in my life. You cannot fight the giant if you don't know who you are. You are a little boy. That's what all the rest said to David. But David knew who he was with God. David knew God's hand on his life. So he was amazed. He said, who are you, Mr. Goliath? How dare you? How dare you come against us? Because do you not know who we are? But you definitely don't know who you are. Because you have no right in my life. So the enemy, the spirit of rejection, the spirit of performance or lust or whatever demonic thing want to come against you. Say, who, you, who are you? Who gave you the right in my life? But if your circumstances must tell you who you are, then at the end of the day, what people say, they must determine. But the enemy... As long as the enemy can keep you away from understanding your identity with Christ, you will be a product of your circumstance. You will be the product of your emotions. You will be a product of your hurt. You are product, a product of your disappointments. So you will live. It's not you choose that. It will be so. But the only reason, the only way for it not to be is if you actively get into the Word of God, ask the Holy Spirit to open it up, because you can read the Word you, the word, and the demon of rejection. You, the word, and the demon of performance, or the demon of religion. You and devils and the word of God. It was Jesus, the devil, and the word of God on the mountain. The temptation. Time for temptation for Jesus. It was Jesus, the word, and the devil. Many times temptation will be in you. When it's you, the word, and the devil. As you are sitting here, it will be you, the word of God, and the devil. Or it will be you, the word of God, and the Holy Spirit. So that's why if your thoughts wander or things are not all in place, say, Holy Spirit, come. It will not be me, the word of God, and the devil on the mountain. And he quoting scriptures or reminding me of scriptures even, the devil. And reasoning about it. No. You need to find yourself. You need to find yourself in him. Who are you? Make sure that circumstances don't determine that. So there was a lot of fear in my life. But then when God said, I must go to this specific gospel song group. And when it's two or three people singing, and I'm not the type of guy that will do something in front of people, I just had to push in. Was it nice? No. Mike for three months? Yes, like this. But step by step, getting out of how I see myself to how God sees me and who God is in my midst. So that I understand my circumstances and the past will not determine who I am. But God... His word and what he says about me. Because he created me. He made me. That's point number two. Let's go there. You've written this down, I believe. Who made you? Guys, nice. when somebody goes into a place of bitterness or unforgiveness, or harden the heart or close the heart towards somebody, that bitterness can make the man. Where you see this... You know, sometimes you can see a gentleness on somebody when he's really open to God. Sometimes in worship, I remember leading worship for 20, 25 years. It was for me so beautiful when I would see people opening up to God. It was for me so beautiful to see faces when a face would just 
you know, leading worship, playing the piano, and look up, and I'm looking into the face of somebody just opening up to God. To me, it was like so many times, so beautiful to see. But it was so heartbreaking many times to see somebody choose a way, a path of bitterness, choose a way to close their heart towards somebody where God didn't tell them to put that person there from them. And how even their face will change after a few months or a year. How when you look into their eyes, you see the criticism, you see the judgment, you see the self-justification, you see things, the war that is inside. No, man, who's making you today? Right now, the word is shaping you, making you when you hear it. Or right now, some other religion or something else is making you. Who made you then? In the heart of the Father, God made you, yes. But who is making you now? Now the scripture says, Matthew 28, you write that down. Verse 19. Go therefore, all authority is given to me, God said. Therefore go and make disciples. Authority is not given, first of all, to the one who is making you a disciple. So when it says, go therefore make disciples, it's not for you, first of all, to think, Okay, I must go to the nations, I must go to somewhere, and I must disciple people. No, first of all is be discipled. Make disciples. So somebody must make you a disciple. And that's people. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So my question is, who is making you? It's the Holy Spirit, it's the Word, but also people to whom you will be accountable and supposed to be accountable to. Is making you what? Into more and more and more the image of God that is in your spirit. But my brother, my sister, the spirit and, the, and my flesh, they will stand against one another. So if you don't have somebody in your life that is sometimes challenging you, where you find conflict in your heart with what that person is saying, you have not the spirit of God in you. The Spirit of God is not living in you. If there is not sometimes conflict in your heart about stuff, and conflict in your heart about the discipleship that you receive from somebody, some other leader, some cell leader, somebody that's walking a road with you to whom you are accountable to. Because the Spirit and the flesh are against one another. Hello? And even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, had to stand in a war against that to the point of sweating blood in this war to follow in the spirit against what the flesh would want to do. Not my will, but your will be done, Lord. Your will be done. Are you with me? Everybody do this. Your will be done, Lord. So many times it will happen in you if God through the Holy Spirit, through the Word, is making you with people alongside you. If that is true, then there will be this sometimes in your life. Not supposed to be every day, but it's, if there's every bad day, it's your problem is not with a person. Your problem is with your flesh. Nobody can control you. Ah, oh, but those guys, they control me. They want to tell me what to do. Only if you believe it. The master for the, with the man, man with the one talent, two talents, five talents. Oh, the master is controlling you and he can take everything away or he can multiply it or, or give it to you. He's in control. No. You do what you do as if unto the Lord. Even Paul didn't tell all the slaves. There was a lot of slavery. He didn't tell the slaves, be set free. Let's, let's, let's fight politically against this. He said, be a good slave. Hello. Because at the end of the day, everyone is a slave to their flesh, to the demonic, to their own ideas, to the spirit of the world, or to the word of God under the guidance of the spirit. I beat my body, Paul said, and I make it my slave. And I make it my slave. Because I will stand in his kingdom. I will stand under his authority. 
through his word. Amen? It's not if you are in slavery. It's just who's the master. Who is the master? That's the only question. The one who made you? Or you are allowing a lot of other rubbish to make you today? Let it be so. That it will be Holy Spirit through his word. As you are sitting here right now. Some things are formed in your life. So that when you go out here, you have learned in this session how to compromise that when you hear the word, you are busy with other stuff. So if our Holy Spirit is speaking today, you've learned here in this session how to be busy with other stuff because you've heard it before. Tomorrow when the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you, you have learned on a Sunday, this is how you were made on a Sunday, how to hear the word and ignore it and be busy with other stuff and there's no conscience, there's no Holy Spirit telling you, this is not right. Focus on the word. You've learned that way on a Sunday. Somebody's making you now. And it's showing you how to respond to the word. So that this week, because of this Sunday, you have fallen back further from his guidance and what he wants to do in your life. Because of how you interacted with the word when you heard it. Where the Holy Spirit is so excited, so faithful, so committed to make the word that you've maybe, if you hear a word, a scripture for a 10,000th time, to make that more a reality in your life. Holy Spirit is so committed every time. But you are making yourself in such a way that you are committed to other stuff, but you are not too committed to what the Holy Spirit is committed to. But he is living in you. But his commitment to the word is there. Your commitment to the word is there. And you've learned that you're okay with it. Or, in Jesus' name, no. when you hear the word, you know Holy Spirit is alert. When the Holy Spirit hears the word that's spoken, when you play that worship music, when you speak the word, when somebody speaks the word, the Holy Spirit is awake to fulfill. Is it not Genesis 1? He was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, and the Spirit of God that was hovering over the waters was so ready to bring that word into fulfillment. And the, he said, let there be light. And there was light. So, then God said, and immediately, because of the Holy Spirit over your life, and there was light, because you took it. But there's other spirits that can form you. And that other spirit, when you hear the word, and there was compromise, or there was an attitude of ignoring, or there was wara wara, because I've heard it before, and it was there in your life, because of that spirit hovering over you, that you're allowing, I'm allowing the rejection, the bitterness, or the fight, or the struggle to hover over me, to hover over me. Hello? Let it be the Holy Spirit, we agree. Amen. In Jesus' name. Who made you and who's making you now today? Number three. Where were you made now and then? If you can understand where you were made. And that's even where we go back into the past. Where does this fear come in my life that even I'm standing in Absa, those days, folks cast bomb. I'm standing there in Apsa, and there's sweat because I'm a, among a lot of people. Hello? How does it work with UNISA, grade 8, um, trumpet exams? Do the exam, and everybody that has above 85% in the country come for this competition, like uh, America's Got Talent. Everybody in the country come, and then there's all these professors that they had there, and now, 
all these guys from wherever in the country, this cello player, trumpet player, piano player, that one, that one, and everyone, the one after, and then it's next one, next round, next round, until the evening with the, all the finalists. And one of the finalists in front of this, all these people. <laughs> Who am I? Who made me? Something in the past that had an impact in my life. That is, a, became a voice that says, you cannot do anything in front of people. Even though I can play that trumpet piece 110% out of my head, laying in bath. What? Ooh, ooh, and it's the evening, and it's the competition, and it's everything. It's an alertness. And then this man come up. <laughs> there at Unisa. And while he plays, <laughs> after I'm finished, then you hear the silence of shock. Like, who's this guy? Where does he come from? You know? If I played it in the exam, I would have failed. So it's a silence, and suddenly someone starts to clap, and you hear the, oh, shame, in the clap, and then everybody starts to clap. Because the way I saw myself, what made me? And then Holy Spirit, one time there, Dr. Jonathan, in a worship session, showed me this little baby, incubator, mother there, dad comes in, big fight, they could even remember it, and God said, there, the fear. And the unsureness of in life came in your life. We dealt with it, but it wasn't clickety-click. Dealt with it, we prayed through it, but then still three months I had to push through for the breakthrough. Who made me? That thing didn't determine my destiny. It wanted to. And that's why most probably I first went through some other studies until I found Christ and God set me free. Because your past can determine your future and you can become the voice that says, I'm not this type of person. This is not my personality. This is not that. That is not that. And it says what type of career you must have. What type of future. What type of job you must have. I need to be set free. I must look back. Where were you made? I was made at a few places with a lot of rubbish. But then I was made, recreated when you gave your life to Christ. Amen. And then more you can remember. Maybe some of you guys can remember. There I took this. And there in my life this was set over me. And there I took, had this time with God. And then God surprised me here. And it shaped certain things in my life. Are you with me? And so God wants to take me from glory to glory. Glory means God's beauty. From God's beauty in me to more of God's beauty in me, of, to more of God's glory and beauty in me. Amen. Where were you made? Number four. There we go. Why are you made? Why? Why, 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 why? Just because. No, let's not say that. Okay. Why? Because God looked at heaven. He was fulfilled, but he wanted more. He wanted you. And your song, when we sing, your song from your heart is a unique song. And there's nobody giving that worship to God among billions and billions of people and angels. There's nobody that sing that song through that heart in such a way like you, like your fingerprint. Miracle, wonder, among billions, not one the same. So, the worship, yet that you bring your God. You're one in a billion. There's such a Christian song, hey. Now, that's you were made to worship him. And in your uniqueness, he wants to enjoy your uniqueness. When, what? When you lay yourself first down at the cross and find yourself among the body of Christ, where you give yourself in the body, then your uniqueness will come out. But if you want to keep your uniqueness, you don't want to lose yourself, you will not find yourself. The one who wants to keep his life will lose it. 
But if you want to follow me, Jesus Christ, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. And you will find your uniqueness, your unique calling. But that every time when you open your mouth, when you sing, if it's an old song, you sang it a thousand times. Every time, it will be unique. And there will be nobody in heaven and on earth that's singing that specific song like that through your heart, through who you are, your spirit. God didn't create, what's that good? Clones. You're not cloned. So everyone, your spirit, with your soul, is unique, even more than your fingerprint. Are you with me? You are made to worship him. You are made that when he's going rough with you, when the temptation is there, when you want to burr, 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 when you want to feel down, when you feel you're a slave, when you feel this, he has called you. Why were you made? So that right then, you are able to say, God, I love you, in spite of whatever. And what I'm going to do now, I'm doing it for you, not as if for somebody. Then you are saying, he's the master, and not somebody else. Not Patrick, he's my master. Hello? But he asked me to do this, and pastor, you think like a and you are not a So you we cannot do it like this. You must do it like that. You must do it like that. Oh, I must just listen and obey him. No. Praise God. I can do as if unto the Lord. Hello? In what I do. But I must take the input. As you met my Dr. Jonathan, if you would tell me, and I'm accountable to him, and he would tell me, this is your time. Find your wife. I can tell him like I told him. That's easy to say. Oh, you had an attitude. No, I was just plain honest about the discouragement that for the past two years I don't even pray about a wife anymore. And he came and he just tuned me. He don't, doesn't, didn't encourage me, get me out of this discouragement and what, and then pray for me and blah, blah, blah. No, he just told me, get your wife now. Hmm. Shut up, submit to your leader and just get your wife. Even though you tried for 15 years. But actually knowing that God said it's not the time, still the flesh <sighs> uh, was looking. Praise God, I waited. Hallelujah. But I had to take it in the spirit. And I will take what God has for me in the spirit. So just after the word and after I said, that's easy to say. Me and the two leaders that went with me to drop in at the airport, we, I said on the way back, get into the shop, get some juice, get some bread, navel heal, communion. We take this word. It will be, become a reality. I'll take this and I'm taking this right now. I receive it in the spirit. I receive this word. To receive my wife, and two weeks later, I. You know, it's all about communion. No. <laughs> are you with me? Make sure you are going with God's word and what God has for you, and He will challenge you. When there's a, still a mindset of, I mean, not in control, but there's a freedom God gives me, He won't challenge it. God's going to help you. Why are you made? You are made to worship him in that circumstance. And you know, sometimes it will not change. Yeah, worship God and put him first. Seek the kingdom, all the rest will follow, all the breakthroughs. Be careful in your interpretation to manipulate scripture. So yeah, put him first. But what if it, did, it doesn't change? Daniel's friends. I'm called here to worship God. Not that was the of well. Not your gods. I will not bow. And he said, Do you not fear the fire? My God will protect me. But if he does not protect me, if he does not change your circumstance, then I still want you to know. It's not just that I will 
worship you. I want you to know, the word says Daniel's friend said to the king, I want you to know, Mr. King, that even if he does not save us from the fire, we will still not bow to you and to your idol. Are you with me? You were called to be such kind of worshiper. That's a man and a woman of God. And when you have the Ishukis, bow before all those gods. Oh, Ishukis, why your heart is not there and why you cannot be with this person and that person. Oversensitive and must be because you're not prepared to take time with the word and get into the word and find out your identity with him. But you were made. That when you will go through stuff, we will go through stuff. That's it. You were made to worship him. You were made to honor him. You were made to know him. Amen. So enjoy it. Get to know this, his vocabulary. Right. Number five. What did you make? You can also say, what did you do? What did you make? What did you do? Now, I've heard that sentence in Afrikaans. What did you make? But it wasn't in a very positive context with mother and father and teacher and headmaster and whoever I want to put on the list. <laughs> and normally it was in a very negative context. What did you mark? But you know, one day we will stand before the throne and the word says to Corinthians 3 that whatever we've done will be tested as through fire. And where we've built with horns, Troy and Staples. What is Staples in Hoi? What's I good? Hay. If you built with hay and all the other rubbish stuff, the instant, the instant building, the, the quick fix, you know, we do the, take the quick fix and all this stuff and then we carry on. In that day, what did, what did you do? What did you make with your life? And it will be burned away and forever you will be for eternity in heaven. Knowing that what you did, you did the right thing, but you did with, it, with such a moaning and groaning that you've lost your destiny. Israel did the right thing. They followed. They kept themselves under the cloud. They followed Moses. When Moses says, stop, they stop. When they he said, go, they, they went. But with the wrong attitude. They always had issues. And in that, they lost their destiny. Because they couldn't do it for God. They couldn't focus on the promises of God and the miracles of God. But they murmured because of the circumstances. And the circumstances formed them to be the people. To be the generation. After hundreds of generations from Abraham, they could be the generation just to cross the Jordan. It's now. After all these years and generations, it's now. And they lost it. And they lost it. Hello? What? Because something formed them in here. And so you can focus on the circumstance and you can focus and justify certain things, why you would not do certain things and why you will not give certain commitments in. Hello? But then... When suddenly there's a spy coming to you, the ten spies, and there's ten spies, and there's another two, and these ten spies, they speak the facts of their, they make responsible decisions. We're going to take our children, we're going to go back to Egypt because we were let out here to die in, in the desert or die in Canaan. Canaan. We are going to make the responsible decision. Because you created such a platform in your heart for other voices. The ten spies just walk into that place, tell you, this is the situation, that is the situation, and just within an hour, you change everything and you decide. We fire Moses, we kill Joshua and Caleb, and we go back to, to Egypt. And they lost their destiny. Because with their, with their flirting with rubbish ideas and with issues, they're flirting with issues. 
created the platform so that the enemy could just rise up, come in, and do what he wants. No, no. What did you make? Now that day, everything will be tested as through fire. It will be burned away if what you've done was wrong, was, was the right thing, but was with the wrong attitude. If it was not done in worship, it was not done as if for the Lord. Whatever you've done, you've done all the right things. You work here at Creari, you work there at the place, and everything expected of you to do, you did. But with the wrong heart, everything is burned away. You've wasted your life on earth. Well, what a, what's a nice word to say, what a hell of a waste of a life. But the scripture says, you will be saved as through fire, because God is faithful. You're a new creation. You were made his child. So you will be saved as through fire. But everything that you've burned, everything that you've done on earth, will be burned away. There will be nothing of eternal value to give to your children as legacy. Uh-uh. Everybody say, uh-uh. <laughs> That's not going to be your life anymore in Jesus' name. I said it for myself also. Let it be so. What did you make? Okay. There we go. Number six. What made you do that? What did you make it? What, what formed you to do that? Why? You have a flirting with a voice of anger. You have this anger or you have this issue. That thing will make you do stuff that's not right. Anybody that got angry that said something wrong when they were angry? Just me? Seems to me. <laughs> what made you do that? That frustration that you didn't deal with. That irritation that you didn't deal with. That thing that started to get a voice in you. And now this issue, this frustration, this irritation, this judgment of this person or unforgiveness. Blah, 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 we don't, well, don't say we judge the person. No. But that thing start to get a voice and suddenly it's just I'm fed up I'm up to here up to here with the thing burning in me I'm supposed to be up to here with love for people that I cannot keep it in but I must tell them about the gospel I'm so full of the spirit and the spirit is connecting the word in me so the spirit is alive in me with the word hello so that the word will dwell richly in me. And I, there's so much word in me. I cannot but speak about God. I cannot but testify. I cannot but hear the voice of God. I cannot but hear when the Holy Spirit says, deal with this, forgive that man. Or deal with this, go and speak to that man. Because maybe you think you must forgive him for what he did, but he didn't even do it. And you sort out your heart. And the enemy is laughing at you because he's manipulating you to believe certain things about your brother or your sister. That's not even true. Go to that person, sort it out. If you believe the truth, if you respect the cross, if you respect the fact that God gave you the message of reconciliation, if you respect that calling, if you respect this message, you go and sort it out. Not just because you want to must sort it out. Not because you must work together. No, but if you respect the word, you don't go and sort it out. Your issue is not with a person. Your issue is with the word of God. Ah, you still here? May the truth set us free. Free, free, so that I can live according. What made you do that? The word of God, the word and the spirit in me. Jeremiah says, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. I'm trying to shut up. That's wrong context of interpretation of the word. But that specific word. But I want, I'm keeping it in here. In here. In here. But the word must become with the Holy Spirit a fire shut up in my bones. I cannot but put it out there. This is what God is saying. Jeremiah, the prophet. God is saying this to me. God is about this situation. I must pray this. I cannot be silent. I must even in prayer speak forth what will happen uh, with the election, with the politics. It's, it's there. Why? 
because I have my time with God, I'm praying in tongues, I have time with the Word, I dwell on the Word, and what must come out is from heaven, is from the heart of God. Amen? Where the love of God, 2 Corinthians 5, compels me. Where the peace of God will protect me, my heart and my mind. Hello? Where the joy of the Lord is my strength. That, that strength is a movie. There's an intensity with that. With the love, the joy. Hello? Peace. There's intensity. But if you don't allow that, there will be other intensity. An intensity of, I'm down. I don't want to do anything. I'm just, uh, uh, and I'm worrying about this, and I'm worrying about that. And this is wrong, and that is wrong, and all those voices. The intensity is, I'm keeping you down. Shh. You will be down. You will be down. You will not have energy. You will not have vision. You will not be motivated. You will not do this for God. And don't believe that sentence where people say, I'm not working for God. I'm working, I'm working with God. It's not true. If you're a worshiper, you're doing it for God. But you cannot do it without Him. So you must walk you must work with him, for him. But I do this for God. Because if I do this for men, I want to kill that guy. <laughs> and I'm not going to do then what I'm supposed to do. But I will have that wonderful time with Emil, even though if I wanted to kill him, I will do it as he unto the Lord. I look in his eyes and I realize I'm doing this for the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but if I cannot see the Lord in the situation, you're not a worshiper in spirit and truth. But if you're a worshiper of God in spirit and truth, you come into that situation and you do it as if unto the Lord. You sit with that person even if it's the 20th time. You know? You with me? Jaden. Thank you. Papa, I you say whom that to do. I'm telling you stuff 20 times. You showed me one, once how to handle the camera to take a photo. And now you want to get angry, you know? Okay. God must help us. Amen. Are you with me? What made you do it? Okay. How many people in jail say, I don't understand what made me do it. It is such a stupid thing that I did. But it was the build up of what he allowed in his life. All the anger or all the this, all the that, all the build up that into that place. Say, what made me to do this? That's what the guy asked in jail. Why he raped, why he killed why he stole that stuff? Why he started to be in corruption with, that, with the money? What made me, me do this? It started with that small thing. Yeah, we're not going there anymore. Right, number seven, last one. Where are you going with what you are doing? Let's say, where are you going with what you are doing? The fullness of today becomes a seed for a harvest tomorrow, and next week, and next year. 30, 60 fold harvest for what you're saying. Ah, deliver as a or This is like that. I never get this right. I never. For, forget about never because you're cursing your destiny. You're cursing your destiny. First with words, with your faith, with what you allow in your heart. Hello? Where are you going with that attitude? It's not going to change that person. But where are you going in your life, into your future, with that kind of attitude? With guy, that kind of mentality, with that kind of speaking? Evaluate, my brother and my sister. You are his workmanship, created for good works, excellent works, that he prepared for you in advance. 
for you to do today, tomorrow, next year, for the next decade. Then what are you doing? Where are you going with what you are doing? What are you doing right now? Are you taking the word of God? Or are you say, such a voice that you are intimate with now? And it's not the word of God. And that thing is shaping you right now. And as you allow that thing, as you sit here, to shape you right now. Where are you going out here when you've learned here to hear the word, to ignore the word, to just let it wara wara pass you while you found it very precious to meditate on other stuff while hearing the word? Where are you going with that life? Tonight, when you're supposed to read the word, and you just, this one, the, the son of that, and that one, 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 the son of that, and another eight verses of that. That's the scripture that you got. Lord, give me a scripture next time. It is in the word. Maybe God wants to speak to you about legacy. Maybe God wants to speak to you about that you must be part of that legacy where you stood on the promises of God and your son had the impact of you and his son had the impact of what you prayed and his son had the impact of your faith and what you stand on and his son had the, the impact of what if Jesus tarries to come. That there's a generation that because of your faith, your life, your prayers, what you confessed, what you stood on, your, the generations will be blessed because of how you live today. And that may be what God wanted to say to you. Where are you going today with his word as you allow him to speak to you? Come Holy Spirit and please do this in our lives. Even as now we will have communion, we want to declare that our future is excellent with you because of the blood. We have a hope unshakable hope because of the unshakable word of God the word of the cross thank you for that my Lord that as we have communion we want to lay aside everything that's not from you and we say Holy Spirit help us to find ourselves in you and in you alone in Jesus name in Jesus name amen if you are here not a member of the church, but your life is right with Christ, there's no issues with people, then we invite you to partake with us in communion. As you, we declare today, we proclaim his death. For it was given to me that in the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And so also the cup, he took the cup and he said, this is the New Testament in my blood. Take, drink thereof. Do this as you affectionately remember me. For as often as you drink this cup and eat this bread, you are proclaiming my death. But everyone who drinks from this cup and eats from this bread must do it in a worthy manner. He must examine himself so that there will not be judgment that he is drinking over himself and eating over himself. God, we don't want to come under the curse of judgment by partaking in communion if we know there's things that we first need to sort out with others. I pray that every man and woman will examine themselves, Lord, not to be condemned, but to come in the place of freedom through the blood of Christ as we choose to respect your blood, to respect your body more than anything else that happens, more than any other offense or thing that happened in our lives. Thank you that we can take victory right now as we enter through the blood and through the message of the cross to be the power of God unto salvation from every situation in our lives. In Jesus' name, so we pray. Take your time with God or with someone. Enjoy it in his presence.